Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الطيبين وأصحابه الغر ما يمين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في الدين بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال عز من قائل ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we thank Him, we testify to the fact that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and He has absolutely no partner. And we testify to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His true servant and His final messenger, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to the entire creation and whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave for us in every single aspect of our lives as the best and most complete role model and guide. Brothers and sisters, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day that He has given us life. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many blessings. On a blessed day of Friday, it's an important time to reflect on the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives and it's something that we can do collectively we can mention but it's something that doesn't have the same impact unless it's done on an individual basis unless a person thinks in their own life and in their own condition from their past to their presence how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them in their health in their wealth in their family how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them to be able to live in peace and to be able to live in security. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us 
how life could be if those blessings, many of which are taken away. And so it's a constant reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are immersed in those blessings of His subhanahu. And it's also then important that we reflect on the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been given that wasn't requested but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to us, most of us again kind of being born into it the blessing that if we have then everything else is irrelevant and that's the blessing of knowing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessing of being able to say La ilaha illallah and when we reflect on this then we recognize again how blessed we really are and even though we are struggling a lot as individuals even though we're struggling a lot maybe as families even though we're definitely struggling a lot and going through a lot of hardships and there's a lot of work and room for improvement in this ummah there's still a lot of khair in us as individuals in us in our families in our communities and in the ummah as well and it's important that we recognize this goodness and it's important that we support it when we see it and that we encourage it wherever it is and that we use it as motivation for us to work in the areas that we need to work on and we need to improve in it doesn't help us to be in a constant negative state and it's very easy with what we see again in our individual lives in our family lives a lot of times in the community all of the negative in the ummah right and for us to become you know just very pessimistic and and feel like you know there's no hope and let's just wait until the Mahdi comes because that's the only time that we're gonna have some sort of success and we kind of become you know a fatalistic society or ummah or group of people that's just focusing on the negatives right and you may say okay what does this guy know he looks like a red velvet cupcake right now but I'm asking or I'm saying let's look at what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let's look at how he was able to find goodness in his society how he was able to find goodness in his people how he was able to see within the people who are struggling the most at times when it was the most difficult or at times when it would be easiest for a person to just say you know what there's no hope we find that the Prophet ﷺ left for us a beautiful sunnah of optimism, a beautiful sunnah of positivity. Just the way that he was وسلم, in terms of his attitude in general. The companions, they described him as Basaman Bahaka, that someone who was constantly smiling, someone who was constantly able to bring warmth and cheer to those who were around him and no one had a more difficult job or had more stress or responsibility or burden on his shoulders than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right at times when the Muslim Ummah was literally on the brink of destruction in the battle of Ahzab when the Muslims are concentrated in the city of Medina and you have an army of 10,000 coming to descend upon the city to destroy it. And it's a time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that the believers themselves themselves were shook. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the scene, He's describing the environment and He's saying that the eyes were darting back and forth and there was so much fear that the hearts, they reached the throats. And it got to a point that people were unsure what's going to happen. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا That this, in this place, it was when the Muslims were tested and they were shook. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that they were shook. 
right? And it was at this time that the Prophet وسلم, in a hadith that's mentioned that when the Muslims, that they were digging this trench and that whenever they would come across a rock or an obstacle that they had a hard time dealing with, they would call the Prophet وسلم, and he would be the one to come and deal with that issue. And it was at this time, as he is striking a rock and the sparks are coming from the rock, he gave the Muslims, he gave the believers glad tidings of what? Not that they would get through this particular difficulty or incident, right? Not that they would come out victorious, but that they would eventually conquer the greatest superpowers of that time, right? He's giving them glad tidings that the lands of the Romans will be open, the lands of the Persians who at that time have the most power and the most control. And that's why the hypocrites at that time, they couldn't understand, right? They said that the Prophet ﷺ is giving glad tidings, he's making these promises, and one of us can't even use the bathroom in peace out of the fear of what's approaching. Right? So the hypocrites, they, they weren't able to see. They weren't able to have that optimism. They were very pessimistic in terms of the promise of Allah and His Messenger. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابِ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ that when they saw this army oncoming, when they heard these promises being made, they said, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, prom and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised us. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that their response to this incident is that it increased them in iman and increased them in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even in the most difficult moments you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bringing glad tidings to his people. You have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam able to see the long-term vision and see khair that came or that is coming in this ummah. And it's not to say, it's not that we don't have a lot of work to do or that we should just accept that these things are going to happen, but it's to show how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt, like we said, even with those who are struggling and that he saw goodness in his ummah. I mean, just think about the amount of times that the Prophet ﷺ corrected people in the way that he did so. He would always recognize the goodness in people. He would always have that level of rift, that level of gentleness, that level of kindness, because he saw that these people had that goodness within him, and he, even though, they were struggling and they made mistakes and they fell into these things. He recognized that inherent khair that they had in them and he encouraged it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what we have in this ummah. We have a lot of areas that we need to work on, that we're falling behind in. But we do have a lot of khair as well from our elders who built the institutions that we have, who have left for us a foundation to build, on, to build on to the young professionals, to the youth especially, who are holding on to their Islam, who are holding on to their deen at a time when it's very easy to turn away. I mean, just think of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he says, يَعْجَبُ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَاعِي غَنَمْ فِي شَغِيَّةٍ مِنْ جَبَلٍ that يُؤَذِّنُ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Right, that he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed and pleased with the shepherd. Okay, just think about this. He's pleased with a shepherd who is by himself in an area of isolation, and the time of salah comes, and he makes the adhan and he prays the salah. Allah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Unzuru ila abdi, look at my slave, Yahafuni that he has that awareness of me, that when the time of salah comes, even though there's no one around, he still makes that effort to pray. قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُ وَأَدْخَلْتُهُ الْجَنَّةِ That I have forgiven him and entered him into Jannah. If this is for someone who is by themselves, right, in a desert with sheep, he is isolated and he remembers Allah and he 
prays and he fulfills the responsibility of Allah. What about the people? What about our youth especially? Who may not be by themselves, meaning that there's people around them. Yet, they may be in oases of good, meaning that there's nothing that is encouraging them to do that good. And yet, they still choose to hold on to that good that they have. They still choose to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They still choose to be Muslim, to live as Muslim, whether it's at school, whether it's in the workplace. These are signs of, of good. And we have to have that same optimism of the Prophet wasallam, who tells us that there's always going to be good in this ummah until the day of judgment. لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق ظاهرين لا يضرهم من خالفهم that the Prophet ﷺ tells us that there will always be a group, a section of this ummah on the truth and that they will always be victorious. And so a person may hear this hadith and say, okay, fine. There is a group of the ummah that they're sticking to the truth. But how are they always victorious? The Prophet ﷺ is saying, they will always have victory. And the reason or the understanding of this is that the way that we see victory is not always the way that victory is. So zahirin can mean, yes, victory in terms of authority, but there is a deeper meaning to victory and that is that we stick and that we have iman. And that we have and we recognize that we have the truth and we have the proofs with us, and we still have the Qur'an, and we still have the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and we still have people calling to those things, and we still have people struggling with those things. We have people who are involved in the society trying to make goodness happen. Our women, our youth, all of them working together. Again, it's not to say that there isn't a lot of room for improvement, there is. But to be able to work for that improvement, we first have to recognize the good that we have within us, the good that's still in this ummah until that day of judgment as the Prophet ﷺ has told us. And that's why I started the khutbah with the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't have a defeatist mentality. Don't be sad. وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ that you are the ones who are on top. You have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the only condition that He gives, in kuntum mu'mini. Right? As long as you are believers, as long as you're working in your iman, as long as you are fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who choose to see that goodness like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, they work towards that goodness. Those who see that goodness in people, that even when they make mistakes, even when they mess up, they're like how the Prophet ﷺ was with those people. And they deal with them with rifq and with kindness and with goodness. I mean, imagine someone coming up to the Imam of a masjid now and saying, I want to commit zina. Give me permission to commit zina. Imagine the response, right? This was the case with a young person who comes to the Prophet ﷺ and who says that, Ya Rasulullah, it then leave zina. Give me permission to do zina. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ, as he himself, as this Sahabi says that the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't, you know, get angry with me. He didn't reproach me. He didn't insult me. Even though the companions, they got upset. How can you say this? to the Messenger ﷺ. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ seeing the goodness that this person had. I and mean, one person amongst the ummah, of an ummah of goodness, he calls him to him and he talks to him at a level and in a way that he can understand. Right? And he tells him and he is able to convince him through talking to him, would you like this for your mother? He says, of course not then other people wouldn't like it for their mothers either. Would you like it for your sister? No, other people wouldn't like it for their sisters either. And then he puts his hand on his chest and he makes dua for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this young man is able to leave and he says that after that, I turned away from this sin or I turned away from thinking about this sin. 
We see that the Prophet ﷺ dealt with people with rifq and that's why the companions, they would say, Ni'm al-Mu'allimu kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an amazing teacher he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma ra'aytu qablahu wa la ba'dahu mu'allia ta'aliman mithlahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I never saw anyone, as Mu'awiyah al-Hakam, Ibn al-Hakam al-Sulami says, I never saw anyone that was a better and that was a kinder teacher than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw the goodness in this Ummah, saw that even when we are at a low point, there is still khair in, in us, and we just have to work towards it, and we have to see it. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gives us a beautiful hadith. And he says, Ummati kal ghayr, la yudra al khayr, la yudra awwaluhu khayr, aw akhiru. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my Ummah is like the rain. Right? You don't know if the first part of it is the best or if the ending part is the best. Right? Meaning what? Meaning that there's no doubt that the first generation, the generation of the companions عنهم, were the best. Right? And one of our teachers, he explained it like that when you're going to plant something, right, that rain that comes to allow that plant to sprout, that's the most important rain. This was the Sahaba who established this deen for us and brought it to us. But there needs to be rain to maintain and to nourish that plant in its later part as well. And this is the role of our ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that the khair that comes from that nourishing towards the end of the ummah, maybe when it's at a time when drought is spread throughout the earth, that you don't know that maybe the good that comes from this part of the ummah will be so beneficial to the people and to the world that it's going to be similar to that first part of the ummah, to the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And the group or the generation or the part of the ummah that brings this deen and brings it out again and supports it is the, is the generation that's closest to that generation of those first generations who did this work. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ always had optimism in his companions, always had optimism in that khayr. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he says, I wish I could see my brothers. I wish I could see them. And he talks brothers and sisters, because sisters are included in that as well, right? He's talking about you. He's talking about you because the companions, عنهم, they said, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? And he ﷺ says that no that you are my companions. I and mean, the people who are with me, my brothers are those who come after me, who believe in me without having seen me. And the Prophet ﷺ says that the reward of them for being able to do that, for sticking to this deen, for seeing the goodness in it, even that much later, is a reward that is unimaginable. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on his deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always allow us to be optimistic, to see the khair in people, to see the khair in ourselves, to work with that khair towards improving, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us keys that open all the doors of goodness and keys that close and that lock all the doors of sharr. قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وليس المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه. وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه أما بعد فأوصي نفسي وإياكم بتقوى الله عز وجل ثم أعلموا عباد الله أن الله سبحانه وتعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بملائكته وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال عز من قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم كن لهم معينا ونصيرا 
ومؤيدا وظهيرا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون